what a great weekend. A bit of a rack fest truck race, but a great Xfinity race, and a great homage to the sport's history. A great amount of complaining about the boring cup race with the 750 horsepower package. What the hell? How do I reach these kids? Yep. Once again, what seemed like a completely successful weekend for NASCAR has fans once again split. This is definitely normal for a weekend with the 550 horsepower package, but with the 750 package, it kind of seems odd. After all, this past weekend's package is the one that NASCAR fans have been at least claiming to scream about wanting since the 2019's package was announced. But yet once again, negativity persists. Now, before we get into this, I wanna preface my perspective on this. I am not a diehard Martin Jurex Jr. fan. I think he's a good guy, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to root for him. He's just another competitor to me. Also, I watched the race from the same Fox broadcast that millions of others at home did. So if I miss something, it's because I couldn't see it on the broadcast. And lastly, this isn't fact. It's my opinion, and it's based on my perspective of what I think is good and bad racing. But with that being said, I want to say straight up that that wasn't a bad race yesterday. No, it wasn't a 2003 Darlington race or even a 2020 Xfinity race finished from last fall. It was not an all-time great, but I absolutely loved the race yesterday. And what I loved about it was how that 750 horsepower low downforce package made the cars harder to drive. The warm temps also made them hard to drive as well. The result was cars slipping and sliding to the point that even the most dominant cars were on the brink of spinning out. So when it came to poorly running cars, naturally some of them would spin out either from poor handling and or the fact that they had contact from another badly running car. As a longtime fan, this is really fun for me. I know that drivers like Cole Custer, Eric Almarola, and Kurt Busch are good or great drivers. They're not scrubs. So when they have trouble keeping the cars underneath them, I am really seeing what teams have put everything together best all around. I'm seeing what drivers that day have shown up the best in that race. Darlington is a track that's set up nearly perfectly at this point for the types of racing that NASCAR fans claim they want to see. Races here are set in warmer times of year, so the track is slicker. The track also is repaved almost a decade and a half ago, and the high horsepower package is used here. So this isn't to say that this is a perfect one-to-one -one ratio for all other NASCAR tracks, but it sets up great at Darlington. Cars being hard to control alone doesn't make a good race. After all, the cars were hard to control in a lot of Kentucky races, yet not a large contingent of fans are really asking for two races in Sparta. But what the difficulty of mechanical grip did lead to was another good part of this race. The comers and goers, aka the strategy. There were plenty of times that either a driver would gamble and tank or they gamble and skyrocket. The two largest were, one, Ross Chastain having an ill-fated strategy that saw him go from a mid-cycle leader to a lap down at about 30 laps. The tire fall off nailed him down and he never truly recovered. Meanwhile, Christopher Bell pitted after most others in stage two and he was able to use that and the more fresh rubber that he got to make up positions in the top 10. Two vastly different results from the same root cause. For me, this was and still is fascinating. But even if these things on their own don't keep people invested in the show, well, then maybe at least they can be put together and do that. While a finish doesn't make a whole race, it is still one of, if not the most important parts. The duel between Kyle Larson and Martin Truex Jr. took two full runs to come to fruition. On the final green flag pit stops, Larson came in early and gained about three seconds on Truex, who was on track an extra lap with old tires. Then he charged his ass off to catch the number 19 Toyota Camry. 
both drivers were on the ragged edge, weaving in and out of lap traffic within a half second of one another for most of the final run. The most impressive part being that Kyle Larson went three wide up the middle into the turn at Darlington. Most know that that usually ends pretty badly. But ultimately, this battle ended up in Truex's favor. While entertaining, the battle ended with the leader, as the laps clicked off, becoming the victor. The dominant driver was able to hold off the challenger, and this doesn't make it a bad race. After all, if people are going to look at laps led and intervals for what makes a race good, then they can also look at the fact that this 400 mile race featured 2,939 green flag passes, which is more than each of the last 14 Darlington Cup races had, 12 of which being 500 milers. That alone doesn't make this a good race, but if we're going to go off single statistics, then why can't we do that too? The point of this being, you cannot merely use statistics and numbers to grade how good a race was. But with all of this, one has to ask what the fallout of all this is. What I'm hoping is that nothing is. Twitter rage is finicky, and that's really what was fueling this conversation. It has the attention span of a nap. What fans say on Twitter will be forgotten within a week's time when the next race comes around. NASCAR should not gauge the success or failure of their product off of a trending opinion online. While media, YouTubers, and fans can stress off on all this, I think that an organization like NASCAR is well above this. Their pay grade is well above this. What I do think is going to happen is that NASCAR will look at everything that all of us have said online on Twitter and factor it in to the decision-making process. My solution would be to have a legitimate fan council, not a sham one like we have now that's riddled with excessive bias and low confidence. The low confidence being due to the excessive bias. What should be done is putting together a fan council with the target audience of fans who are fans today and seeing what they preferred about each race. This can be compared to metrics that sponsors have with their happiness or TV rating numbers as well as social media engagement such as, for instance, views on YouTube or impressions on Twitter. I will say that I'm no expert on this field. I could be completely off and talking out of my ass. But with changing times in media and sports consumption being different, there needs to be changing ways and different ways to find out what fans really want. Because it really seems like NASCAR fans don't know what they want. But personally, I think I do know what they want. I think we as a collective want the romanticized version of the early 2000s. We see all the great stuff about it, and it was a great time. But it wasn't perfect. There were dud races, and there were a lot of them back then. Just like they are now, just like during the COT era, just like before. I'll admit, I fall into this pitfall a lot. And... It's something that I think I and a lot of fans have to work on. But that's a conversation for another day. I gotta say, I don't envy NASCAR's position here. Let me make it clear. I 100% think that the 750 horsepower package race with low downforce that we had at Darlington yesterday is the direction the sport needs to head. But I'm only one schmuck on the internet. Instead of just me talking, let's get more voices into this conversation and see what we all want. So let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts were about this race and the direction NASCAR is going overall with their packages. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like this. And until next time, have a good one. Uh, this package was really slick, and I knew before the day started that like the cars were going to feel terrible. I mean, just feel absolutely terrible, even when you were good, and that was the case most of the time. Even when I was, you know, catching Truex here at the end of the first stage, my car was all over the place bad. But it was, uh, you know, that's the high horsepower, you know, low, low downforce. It was just sliding all over the place. So it was a lot of fun to drive. Um, you certainly, I mean, you had to work for all 400 miles at, at this racetrack. Uh, so I, I thought, from a statistics standpoint, it's, they're going to say it's not a good race.
because the trick's dominated. Um, but man, it was it was a driver's racetrack today.